You want a shout out for me and have more vids frequently? Then support me on Patreon where the cost is only three. What if I told you that the longest running adult animated series made a basketball episode in a different perspective? A way to express the story of a basketball player in a mocking way. To poke fun at the documentaries of ESPN and the characters that work there. Good morning, everyone. My name is Jason Blade, and this is a Bat's Closer Look at the Simpsons 22 for 30. Yo, was that documentary thing good? Was that was that a good voice for documentaries? <laughs> I hope you guys like that. Before we hop into the actual episode, I want to appreciate the uniqueness of one of the many, many intros this show has. It was definitely a cute way to show off a drawception of each of the characters. While I haven't watched the show all that much, that is one thing I truly appreciate when it comes to what the show brings in its intros. Taking a moment to spotlight other amazing artists to put their spin on this iconic family and the intro is really cool to witness. It pushes the idea that creativity comes in all forms. Though the ending to this one was a bit much. The beginning of the episode really pushes the idea of a documentary straight into your face with a very serious narrative. Wait, you know what? Let me do this quick. <clears throat> with a very serious narrator voice talking about a massive scandal in Springfield sports. And of course, the main involvement of this scandal is none other than Bart. Okay, I'm done. I'm, I'm, I'm done. I'm serious. After all, he is considered the troublemaker of the three kids and is known to be more athletic with his skateboarding ability. And other examples from episodes I don't know. Look, I've only watched two episodes of The Simpsons, which is this episode and one from a Halloween collab that Dan the Man did. You should watch that too. After this one. We also get a nice knockoff cameo of Stephen A. Smith which, at this point, is the face of ESPN. They did a really good job portraying this character as close as they can, having to use a large number of big words and emphasizing every single one of them to show the intelligence he has about the topic he is referring to. Seriously, this man is trying too hard. The intro gives us the issue outright with Bart admitting that he is involved in point shaving. A practice that is a huge no-no in all sports. And I'll explain why when we get to that point. So getting into the intro song of this documentary, it was short, sweet, and gives a callback to previous sports-related scenes the Simpsons have done in the past. I view this as a celebratory scene for all the longtime viewers for the Simpsons, as they can recognize some, if not all, of these scenes and where they're from. This is a sports documentary. I'm getting there. This segment gives us a glimpse of all that witnessed or was involved in the overall story. I love the way they showed the opposing beliefs between Marge and Seymour, since the two have very different relationships with Bart. Marge, being the mom, believed that no one in town thought Bart would go down this road, which was combated immediately with Seymour saying, I always thought he'd work for gamblers with the mob. The parallel between the two is a good call to the deferring opinions between family and the public. Usually, family members do see the good side of you more compared to those outside of that circle. This also gives out other factors that were involved as they mentioned gambling and the mom in this episode. That shows how large this scandal is for those who don't understand the concept of point shaving. Gambling and moms are two things you don't want to use in the same sentence and it emphasizes how big of a hole Bart placed himself in. Finally, we get that setup of how this story begins with one of Bart's staple pranks. Willie, kill the bees! Not till I hear their side of it! They do a pretty nice montage that shows how Bart has found his raw talent in basketball, using a great song in I Wish by Ski Low. 
a very recognizable song that focuses on basketball and it does scratch my favorite tracks to use in these sorts of montages. It was great to see other adults also join in on the fun as he improves his skills casually. It helps show why the adults allowed him to join the school's basketball team since they were able to witness his skills firsthand. Also, it shows hope that basketball would be a way to help Bart learn to be humbler. Too bad that ain't the case. When it comes to being the best, there's a lot of praise that comes with it. And knowing Bart, it's no surprise that it went over his head with the adults enabling that mindset and allowing him to do anything he wanted. It's one thing to have the kids treat him like a god, but the higher ups giving him that treatment doesn't push the much needed lesson of selflessness. It instead pushes the terrible ego Bart has. I'm not coaching anymore. Our new coach will be parent volunteer and Bart owner, Homer Simpson. Of course it is. Homer is the easiest of the family to influence over since he is an idiot. I really like how in this announcement, Bart emphasizes how much he separates himself from the rest of the team, with the barricade, shades, and of course the basketball. He really pushes the idea of being the star into high gear. Plus, the cut to the interview with Bart in the shot as well shows that even though the coaching change is big, he still has the bigger spotlight. The lack of knowledge Homer has gives Bart the opportunity to really take over this team and bend it to the way he wants. The longer time goes by, the more spoiled Bart becomes. And it shows well with the large amount of TVs he's bought, doing an excessive amount of showboating, and the more disrespectful he is to his coach. Clean that for me, coach. And that, and that, and those, and that, and that. What are you looking at? This starts the conflict between Homer and Bart. Homer tries the calmer approach in getting Bart to be a team player, but Bart thinks otherwise. The gradual build in this scene was played very well because it really shows the amount of tested animosity between the two. We've seen this plenty of times in sports where the relationship between a player and a coach sour fairly quickly if they don't see eye to eye, which is an issue that happens in the NBA. We've seen a lot of stories where the star player of a franchise has some sort of beef with the coach, and usually it's the player that gets what they want. It's a very difficult spot for a coach to be in because he has to make the choice of whether to do what's best for the enjoyment of others or pander to what the player wants. It's a bit of a reversal to the relationship that Coach Wittenberg and Tucker has. Unlike Tucker, Bart is pushing the coach into doing what he wants. Meanwhile, Homer has to try to force his authority against Bart. I also thought the scoreboard was a great touch to show how much Bart is involved in his team's success, but it can also be tied to how much he has changed the school's team in its entirety. They then signify the commercial break with talking about what's up next. The interesting part. Which is, uh kind of an interesting way to hit that break that I'm not really sure how to take. Yes, it does call for documentaries to really drag out their exposition of the overall story they're telling. At the same time, I'm not sure that's what you want to tell your audience that we're now getting into the juicy parts of the documentary. Because it gives the sense that the build up to what is coming was boring in the grand scheme of things. And speaking of, today's video is brought to you by a company that will one day sponsor me at some point only a matter of time anyways back to your regularly scheduled program from now on you're going to be a team player no more important than anyone except millhouse i'm on the team cuz it's my ball now we finally get the exciting incident of the story that was hinted earlier in this episode the mafia it was a pretty funny way of handling the intro of the main antagonist in the story by highlighting the group as soon as Millhouse was out of the frame of their shot. They did a good job setting up how easy it was for the mob to get to Bart with showing the lack of reliability of the police and also expressing how dangerous the leader of the mob that Tony is in a hilarious way. Using the go to lawyer whispering in the villain's ear to adjust his wording a tad is a great way to push that idea in a lighthearted way, and the Simpsons pulled it off well here. One of my personal favorite bits of these segments was when he was talking about his love for basketball and how similar to what he does in life. Basketball is just like life. 
It's filled with a court, shooting, and guards. Basketball is nothing like life. Classic. Just like any mom leader, they saw this as an advantage to manipulate Bart into being a pawn, and it showed in the next game when he wasn't playing like he normally did. Holding the ball for a majority of crunch time and not willing to shoot. If you don't know what is happening, it is seen as harmless. However, um, I'll let Lisa explain what's really going on. He was point shaped. That's when a player wins the game, but make sure his team doesn't cover the spread. The team's happy, the gamblers are happy, everybody wins. But it's highly illegal for a reason. You're essentially trying to fix the score to pander to the gamblers who want to grab the bigger piece of the pie. You're also hindering the team's success by keeping things tighter than they need to be and is against the moral code within the realm of sports. After all, it is a competition, and not putting out your best efforts hinders that. Of course, Bart knows nothing about that. He's so headstrong about getting all the praise and glory that he's willing to go this right despite his dad from doing it his way. We do get some nice snippets of the town's reaction to the scandal with a variety of newspapers and scenes showing how well this is affecting them. Now Bart is being asked the tough questions about his role in the scheme. It's a great way to show the weight that's being built on Bart and he's being too smug to realize what's happening around him. He's not thinking about the big picture of why this dude wants Bart to win in this fashion. You're not bald. Your hair left out of embarrassment. Why, you little... Okay, this scene is definitely not my cup of tea. Now, I'm not sure how often they use this sort of gag, considering my extremely small sample size in The Simpsons in general. However, it's one of the least appealing things for me in adult animation, especially with the dynamic that's doing this sort of gag. It felt uncomfortable for me to witness a father strangle his son in that sort of manner for comedic purposes, and it seems like they only did it to try to fill in as much time as possible. Not saying it doesn't work all the time, but it's a joke that overstayed its welcome in this episode. What's this for? You've made a lot of people rich. She just wanted to give you a taste. Like Rumba! Now the reality finally sets in for Bart and what his actions have done. With his first cut of the deal he's gotten into, he now understands the bigger picture of what was really happening. They did a good job showing how much money is being earned from this scheme with the footage of the mob swimming in this money. So now Bart is having to face the consequences of his actions by realizing the major mistake he made and admitting it fully. Ow! She didn't mean that. Now that was a way to show comedic pain. Sure, it's much subtler compared to Homer chugging out Bart, but it does get the point across of how much he messed up. Having a baby show her awareness of the situation by smacking him around really emphasizes that point, and it gave me a good laugh in the process. After another cut, we now know Bart has major concerns about the situation he put himself in. He's trapped in the corner of either giving what the mob wants and costing his team the finals, or get clapped by the mafia. You can't help but feel for Bart in this situation. After all, even if he was being a dingle, he was a stubborn kid that didn't know any better, and how he got to this point wasn't entirely his fault. With all the adults treating him like a king compared to the other players on the team and allowing him to get everything he wanted just because he was the face of the squad. If they had put him in check much sooner, this would not have happened. But of course, the town made their feelings known once again with the various signs going against Bart. Which is a great depiction of how fans are. It reminds me a lot of the Astro scandal. Fans at the time adored this team as they were seen to have built it the right way in 2017. However, when the evidence of sign stealing was exposed a couple of years later, they were the team to despise because they cheated the game in a massive way and that title would be seen in infamy forever. It shows how quickly things can turn for the worse for you once you get caught cheating. I also like to point out that in this scene, 
Homer gets emotional as well, since they both had to share this burden of figuring out how to get out of this mess. It was a nice subtle way to show that the two has to set aside their differences and get a quick gag of the various shots you see in documentaries that wouldn't fit in this one. At the gym that night, you could cut the tension with a knife, but uh, we don't allow knives in school, not even in medical. We got to fight the powers that be. So cutting into the game, Bart now has other obstacles that are in his way after making the decision to do what he can to help his team win the game. The biggest one being Milhouse doing everything he can to screw him over, stating that he was also in dealings with the mob. At this point of the episode, they're doing everything they can to fit in all of the sports documentary tropes that you usually see in one go, emphasizing the slow-mo of the hard foul Milhouse game in a full betrayal, even expressing how the mob took out his prized bobblehead. It makes sense for him to be the one to do the bidding because of how close he is to Bart, and how easily he gets intimidated by everything. I love you. Thanks, Dad. But don't you still make mistakes? The best one was you, son. What a weird, backhanded compliment. But it works very well considering the dynamic between the two. After all, the one thing that is well known is that the two know how to get into each other's hair constantly. But they are still willing to give each other support when it's called for. It helps put into perspective that a parent will do what they can to help them take on whatever consequences are laid out in front of them. Sure, both sides can be messy, but they can be messy together. And that is what's really important. I wonder, if Fat Tony liked basketball so much, why didn't he play? Turns out, he had. For a girls team. A very fitting duex machina. It makes complete sense that Lisa would be the one in charge of getting the two out of trouble with her researching skills. While she was portrayed as a punching bag throughout this episode, her fitting ability of journalism is what gave her the power over Fat Tony. It also gives the sense of how information is powerful. The more information you have on someone, the easier it is to persuade that individual, which works perfectly for a mafia boss that doesn't want his reputation as a cold-blooded monster be tarnished by being a crappy basketball player for an all-girls team. Although, to kinda nitpick, if it took little research into finding an embarrassing story on Fat Tony, wouldn't everyone in town know at that point? If you think about the Mafia, they want all the dirt against you that they can muster up. So, I would think that all his enemies would know about him being a third stringer to an all-girls team already. Maybe it could be a public image thing. But if you can easily Google that, the point still stands. So I wouldn't take that blackmail seriously if I'm honest. You're just stating something everyone already knows. I admit it was fun. Short time, we had our own little superstar. And he kept playing, but he really wasn't that good. But Lisa, Lisa had a real talent for journalism. Whatever that gets us. And that was 22 for 30. They did a great job in portraying a sports documentary. When it comes to these sorts of episodes, being able to recognize some of those quirks really bring out some of the enjoyment in this episode. The use of the characters in interviews never felt out of place outside of a few characters. Also getting Springfield's perception of Bart as the episode went on was great because it shows how your reputation can change overnight. As I mentioned, there were moments where jokes didn't hit for me, most glaringly the choking session in the episode. The Mafia overall was played to perfection. I really enjoyed a lot of the scenes involved with them, and they stole the show when it comes to this episode. The basketball within this one is overall very wacky on the court, but they do a great job representing a superstar getting fame way into his head. This is definitely a solid mockumentary episode that I would recommend for all basketball lovers. Thank you for taking the time to see this Bats Closer Look. Click on the video to the right to see more and subscribe to Jason Blade to join the trip to 1K. You can send your take about this episode in the comments section below. Until then, good afternoon, good evening, and good night.